Hello to the gamers. Quick bandle before Super Auto Pets, before sponsored puzzle stream where we're giving away codes for the demo so you can get into the game and jump up and down in front of me and I have no possible way to stop you. <clears throat> 1993, here's a new one. Track one, drums, bass, harp, glockenspiel, plus strings one. We about to get Wes Anderson up in this bitch. Uh, it's the Jurassic Park theme song. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's too easy. Too simple. Usually I get annoyed when people say, can you get Bandle in one? Because, like, the drums have no melody, so it's really hard to tell what it is, unless, I guess, maybe you're a drummer. But uh, this was uh, a bit of a gimme, for sure. And then this is where we lose it or use it. All right. That would actually go hard in like a Super Nintendo Jurassic Park game. I think they did a good job with it. Hey, Chakrabad and Jagannath, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. They did kind of go nuts on the table for that one. John Williams kind of goaded with it. George Lucas, when the function got a little John Williams at it, ooh. Hey, NL, movie in zone two this morning? You know it, but don't insult me. I would say it was high zone two, low zone three. Average wattage, 172, 100 minute ride. Why no letterbox review? Because uh, Steven Spielberg made West Side Story 2021, uh, two hours and 26 minutes long. So I have another... 46 minutes or so of, of West Side Story still to go. Where are we trending? Right now, I'd say we're trending somewhere between a three and a half and a four, leaning towards three and a half, definitely getting a heart as well. Um, I would also say that the small stuff, the Ansel Elgort, Rachel Zegler uh, love story stuff, the duets are hit and miss. The large-scale ensemble numbers are all transcendental. They're, they're beautifully done, wonderfully choreographed, wonderfully shot. The music goes crazy. It's the, it's the small stuff where the movie loses me a little bit, but the big stuff is all fantastic. What does mana do? It does what it says on the card, which is, well, you, you get the pack in for yourself, by the way. It's already out. We're having a little bit of drama on Twitter. Somebody tweeted me a Dean Norris meme, and it was me when the sap pack comes out. Me when I find out the sap pack is $10. And then someone replied, um, maybe you'd have more disposable income if you didn't spend $8 a month on Twitter. And that dude did not like receiving that message for sure. He replied and then replied to himself. I, I believe that they replied... MFs will really pay 2x a Twitter blue subscription for Netflix just to watch one movie a month and forget about it, but I'm not allowed to spend $8 a month on a platform that I use every day just to expand my reach. And then someone replied to that and said, bold new argument strategy, make up a Netflix guy to get mad at. And I have to feel like that he's not going to like that message when he reads that either. I'm just, I'm, I'm off on the sidelines, okay? I just made the, I, I made a tweet that says it's update day, and all of a sudden I'm like, uh, my, my mentions are a battlefield here. I don't have to take a side. Now in my head, have I taken a side? Of course. But I, don't, I publicly don't have to take a side. That's an unforced error. All I would say is that without getting too serious about it, I don't think that you should have to pay $8 to expand your reach on a social media platform. I think that it should be a meritocracy. I think that the swaggiest dudes and the hottest chicks should naturally rise to the top just because that's the way that uh, the world works. So that's the way the internet should work as well. I don't think it should be determined based on, you know, who gives eight extra dollars a month to Elon Musk. You know, we're all crushed under the same boot. 
Just got back from Costco. What did I miss? Can I tell you something? This question comes up all the time. You have never missed anything. I've been telling you it for years. I'm not trying to uh, be derogatory towards you or my own career, but every stream is the same. This is not Breaking Bad. You know, this is not Infinity War. I went to the bathroom. Did I miss Gulp Shido coming up? This is the radio. You don't get in your car, turn on the radio, and then call your friend and go, hey, I was 10 minutes late to the radio this morning. What did I miss? They played the same songs. They played the hits. They played some advertisements for local car dealerships. There was some paid promotion. And, you know, we, we, we all had a reasonably good time. Vampire bat! Okay, this is where we, we pivot the whole run. You say that, but you missed one stream, and now everyone's saying Hemomancer? I suppose there is some truth to that. You, when you miss a day of school, and then all your friends have a new inside joke by the time you come back, you're like, what the hell? <laughs> everyone's saying, hurt me more, and then you say, hurt me more, and people are like, don't say that. You don't know what that is. And I'm like, you guys were all saying it. They're like, yeah, we were there when the... When they said, hurt me more. We all have that shared experience. You're trying to get stolen valor by saying, hurt me more. What do you think about, we don't need a Rambutan anymore. We make enemy ailments two times worse. But it's, it sucks because like you're making them crispy, which would be awesome. But then, or sorry, you're making them crispy. But you're then making them weak after the crispiness. Why is the phoenix in the back? The phoenix is a, is a, my expectation of it is that it's a four or five stack Andy. You put it here or here maybe because it makes pets crisp. Oh no, eh, maybe you're right. But you want it to ideally weaken the enemies more than it weakens you. Which is why we're setting it up thusly. But I want, I want you to get stronger so that... No, I want you to go first. This is right. So you should make the enemies weak and then make them crispy so they take double damage from the crispiness. And then maybe you can... Yeah, yeah, there's something to this. Rambutan is useless. Don't sweat it. It hasn't been on the squad for a full turn now. All right, well, that's... Devastating, except all of my units lived. <laughs> That's got a sting. <laughs> oh, man. Oops. Doesn't crisp overwrite weakness? For right now, that's the idea. All according to Keikaku. Don't kill my vampire bat before it starts to pop, please. Now weakness overwrote, overwrote crispiness. That's not what I want to see. Everybody crispy? Manticore needs to be further toward the back. Yeah, okay. Because Manticore needs to... Well, it can't get further towards the back. It just needs to live. <laughs> you actually don't need any more health. You're getting more than enough health. Manticore needs to survive. <clears throat> Actually, it has like a 100% chance to get overridden. We, we fizzled their Chimera. That's very positive for business. But then we blew up their whole squad. But then I'm crispy, but they're crispy, but I'm crispy, but they're crispy, but we're crispy. Okay, we got to nine. Could it be possible for the Manticore to live? I feel like maybe... But the, if the Manticore gets crispy, it's probably going to die. Let's move it back one, okay? You make, you make six pets crispy? That's ah, tough, brother. That's a tough one. I gotta think about that. Okay, everybody get weak with everything. We've got double damage status effects. They've got double damage status effects. They've nullified my phoenix. That's terrible news for me. Enemy ailments are doubled. Oh, but they're crispy again! We won. I told you, you've got to nerf the vampire squid, bro. It's too good. We're getting badged out of our gourd. I am the angry vampire squid. Relax, I'll handle this. It's the most confused guy in history voice. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Hydra, Quetzalcoatl, Behemoth, Sleepnir. Me when I'm talking in reverse. Let's let's see. Maybe we got like. How, how is it possible we leveled up three times and the only match we've got is Behemoth, bro? Like that's insane. Also, I'm gonna tell you the Yeti, in my personal opinion, is fool's gold. Okay. I take it every single time. I've taken it on reroll runs. I've taken it on experience-driven runs. It's, it is always bad, except maybe with Loch Ness Monster. But it, it, every time, I'm like, yeah, it would totally fit on this run. It would totally fit. And then I sell like my best unit, take a Yeti, and never win another round. And I'm like, oh, brother. This unicorn sucks. You don't understand, okay? You just don't get it. But you're right. No! <laughs> no! I don't believe it. And it got nothing because it always gets nothing, man. Beautiful. I love to see it. And I think I'm going to call it right now. Bar guest, my personnel opinion. Best tier one unit. It's like a tier one bat but it always hits the same unit, which is negative, but also positive. She's also the best girl in FGO. Okay, here we go. FGO. It's, it's something game online, if I had to guess. Nope, it's Fate Grand Order. You're gonna make me ask, aren't you? What is Fate Grand Order? Doesn't Kate play it? She brings more of a Honkai Star Rail vibe to the function. Is she pogged for 2.0? I didn't, I, I don't even know what it means, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not privy to the updates in Honkai Star Rail. It's that gotcha with the historical figures as anime girls. Oh, you know what? I think, I think she does play that as well, actually. She was talking about it for a while. Sometimes I, I'll look over at her... Uh, her phone and she'll be like in outer space twirling a wand around and doing 9,999 damage to somebody. Sometimes I look over and she'll be like, everybody's wearing like steampunk hats and they're in like a old west town or something like that. Uh, excuse me, my vampire bat got silenced in case you're wondering why Normally it's good, and this time it isn't good. Well, it's still one, but it got silenced. Avery Goods, I want you to know that you got me, okay? You said muted. I looked at my microphone. You got me? If you do it one more time... Perma permaban. But a permaban is not really a permaban, okay? Because you can go into the on-ban requests and request clemency. He said he meant the vampire. I said what I said. <laughs> you got one, you got one get out of jail free card, okay? Be careful. This dude is gonna be rambutaned out of his freaking gourd, bro. This dude's also gonna be rambutaned out of his freaking gourd. We were still pretty close. Hey, Anel, thoughts on your Peloton turning into a coat rack when they go bankrupt? Hey, Chatter, thoughts on uh, LARPing as like a Wall Street big shot in Twitch chat? Weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> it's your life, brother. I'm just, I'm just asking questions. I'm not, a Wall, I'm not a Wall Street guy. I read it on a Wall Street subreddit. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. No, I know, okay? Is that D.L. Guiga? D.L. Guiga doesn't LARP. He doesn't work on Wall Street either. He works on whatever Chicago's Wall Street is. Probably like Door Street or something like that. Crispy them? Crispy them? My God, we are dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know how it is. I used to defend my favorite wrestlers the same way. I would rather you be defending professional wrestlers than like attacking public corporation that the only thing you know about it is that they make an exercise bike that I ride. 
I mean, you just, at that point, you got to cultivate a hobby other than hating. A little bit of hating sprinkled into like a chili of life gives us some spice, man. But, you know, you're just, you're, 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 you think that you're like Cholula, but you've actually turned yourself into the bomb. A hot sauce that you only want to see other people eat. You never want to actually try it yourself. You've, you've turned yourself into one of those like anus pucker hot sauces that like someone buys you for Christmas because that's like your only element of the personality you've ever expressed to them. And then you like put it in the cabinet, but you never actually open it. But whenever anyone comes over, you're like, check out my hot sauces. And they're like, whoa. And then at work the next day, they're like, I knew he was in the hot sauce, but like brother is really in the hot sauce. I'm just saying you got to sprinkle a little hate, okay? A little sandpaper, you know, ironically kind of smooths things out in spite of its roughness. But too much sandpaper, you're going to get a rash. Maybe I got to get a new PC, man. It's kind of crazy. I think this is like the longest I have used a PC since I started doing this job. This is coming up on four years. And it's still doing, like, just fine. It's just getting a little slow. The thing is, buying computers is like a, uh, it's like a hedonic treadmill thing. You're like, it's getting kind of slow. And then everyone, there's like, it's the only thing that the internet will actually pressure you to buy. Everything else, they're like, you don't need to buy that. You could just eat leather. You could just eat dirt, bro. Why are, you buying, why are you buying beef jerky? It's so expensive. Why don't you just go outside and eat rocks? Whenever you're like, oh, do I need a new computer? People are like, yes, immediately. <laughs> but it's doing great. But then you buy a new computer, and as soon as you get it, you're like, whoa, this is so fast. And then like two days later, your brain is acclimated to the new speed. Now it does, I mean, you're literally making the computer better. Like you're getting it's not just two days of goodness for purchasing it. I'm just saying. Let me just make sure I got everything set up here and ready to go. I want to make sure once we start this, we're good to go. It's it. We, it's it's quite a uh, it's quite an interaction today. Like I said, you have the opportunity to win codes for the demo, and because of the fact that the demo is not out yet, if you get the code in this shared puzzle environment, you may be able to log on and see yourself in my world. Now I can't promise you that for sure. I'm just making sure that I got it under control. Okay, wake up, honey. The Lord of Puzzles has arrived. We are playing Islands of Insight thanks to a sponsorship from Behavior Interactive. Thank you, Behavior Interactive, for the sponsorship. The game is not out yet. We are playing an exclusive demo that has not been released yet. The demo will come out February 5th. But as I complete challenges in this, the mods will release Steam codes into the chat that you can use to play the demo before it comes out on... Uh, February the 5th. The game itself comes out February the 13th. So about a week and a half from now. Toasty Will. Okay, there you go. Now I have to actually beat the puzzles for you to get the codes. So you should help me out, okay? I'm not one of those seeders, uh, streamers who's like, never tell me anything. I'm one of those streamers who's like, who's like, please just solve the puzzle for me, okay? It is time to begin your journey. Me waking up every day and using my exercise bike that goes nowhere. Now, this is me going into the settings menu, okay? This is the, I, people always overestimate me. Games always start and they say, you want ultra quality, right? And I'm like, I'm not an ultra quality sort of guy. I'm like a, um, I'm a performance sort of guy. <laughs> Press Wazda to move. Try out your new form. Follow the wandering echo. Press space to jump. Okay, okay. One moment here. We're going to alter it again. I think I have V-Sync on. I would also like upscaling to be off. I would like my FPS to be limited. And I would like my field of view to be slightly raised. And I would like vertical sync to be on. Wait, is it vertical sync on or vertical sync off? I'm basically like a Minesweeper Andy. I mean, keep in mind, I play predominantly like Google Chrome browser games. I'm playing them in Chrome, which is pretty performance intensive, okay? Here we go. I will be following the wandering echo. We will achieve puzzle number one and release five codes into the chat. 
Okay, now this one. C connect all dark cells and all light cells. Well, there's only one option. This puzzle cannot be done. It can't be done. <laughs> it, it can't be done. It simply can't be done. Connect all dark cells and all light cells. It can't be done, bro. Like that, that's we have to connect this, and then these are connected. Oh no, it's so doable. It's so doable. That dude was trying to. He was rushing me. That's the only reason I got confused about that one. Okay, you must fill the entire grid, but don't make an all black grid and don't make an all white grid. Oh, no, 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 you can't make anything with squares. I see. It can't be done. <laughs> it, can't, it can't be done. Because, <laughs> like, I can... Yeah, like, you gotta... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but then, like, how am I gonna... Because then if I... You see the problem here. It can't be done. Once again, it's very easy. I think you have a problem. Oh, because there's, I didn't realize there was one of these that I filled in accidentally at the start. Okay, that's, that's my bad. Now it's, it's so simple, even a child could understand it. This should be uh, a dark square, a light square, a... <laughs> the man is a genius. Are you seeing this? I'm unlocking my sixth chakra. Please turn ambient occlusion on. Okay, okay. I'll let you toggle the settings to, to your uh, degree of enjoyment, okay? I'm going to say ambient occlusion on was requested. It is not running at ultra, by the way. The upscaling quality is ultra. If you turn basic upscaling on, it will probably run a little faster for you. Okay, well, let's, let's turn basic upscaling on in performance mode and then see how it looks. I have to be honest with you. I think I should run my own settings because whatever you just told me to change has now put Vaseline on top of my, my glasses, okay? Try it with 60 instead. Ambient occlusion is, it actually is running like a, like marm, uh, is marmalade good? <laughs> it's running good now, but I got to get rid of this blur, dude. Is that, is that the upscaling or is that what you, you told me to turn on with ambient occlusion? Yeah, that was ambient. What have you done to me? Everything was going fine. I was, I was in my mode. I was loving it. How about upscaling for balance? Intermediate at logic grid rubrica. Hello, rubrica. Can I give you a heart emoji? <laughs> Intermediate at logic grid. This is like an MMO classic. When you run into somebody, you jump up and down. That's human nature right there. Let's start with this basic grid and then take it from there. Don't make any squares. Easy. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hang on. Yes! <laughs> yeah, we are dealing with some performance issues, but I'm pretty sure it's on my PC's end. People are saying that other people are playing it and it looks fine. Sometimes, uh, my PC does struggle a bit. I apologize. This is what the McDonald's play place looked like to me when I was a child. Now as an adult, I wouldn't know what it looks like, honestly, because they have had them all closed since 2020. It's one of those things that never came back. That and the, the salads, they discontinued the salads and then said we can't bring them back ever again for some reason. This is why we can't have nice things. Get to the exit. Okay, a three-dimensional maze. This is my area of expertise. Ready? Go. 
Take me up. Take me up, up and over, please. I have a double jump. I am inside of the Chuck E. Cheese right now. That's a glass wall. This is me at the carnival. As a kid, I never liked the, the House of Mirrors in the carnival because I would always get scared. I don't know if anybody else had the same kind of experience, but like you get into the Hall of Mirrors and like you're kind of just at like Isaac Newton's discretion brother like you just you're, you walk up to something you think is a door it's a mirror you walk up to something you think that is a mirror and it's a door it's a treacherous world out there okay push it push it push it i need your help i think i can go around the pillar i think i can go up and over the pillar and then, this must be our final spot. 97 Crystal Labyrinth Mastery. The man is a genius. Look through all golden rings, but no dark ones. Okay, okay. Hang on, we need to go first person mode for this. I got you, brother, I got you. Through all golden rings. Oh, right, right there. Got it right there. <gasps> oh, that doesn't look through that one. What if, what if you double jump and then look, look down at it from above? I did not run away. I'm getting a better vantage point. POV, you are mouth in player unknown's battlegrounds. Sometimes you got to get a better angle to attack a puzzle from, okay? Sometimes, <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sometimes you got to get a better angle to attack a puzzle. Where did my puzzle go? Did someone beat the instance and then they, they've been removed from my, uh, from my location? They got to get the legendary, unique, uh, godly plate of the whale before me? You can tile my kitchen. I promise you, you don't want that. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Zoom me, please. This is where this was built so we could solve this puzzle. Okay, the problem is how am I supposed to get through this one and this one? You got to go like this. <laughs> This is my little seam. Oh. Squeeze me. Squeeze me. Kate, everyone else can make fun of me. I expected better from you. Well, <laughs> maybe not. Oh, okay. Hang on. See, I don't know if you understand the puzzle fully. You have to be able to look through all of the gold rings, but none of the dark rings. You were so close. Someone from the sponsor wants to check if you have FPS capped. I do have it capped. I have it capped at, at 60. Previously, I had it capped at 30, but it actually seems to be a little smoother at 60. It was right there. I think I need Legolas's elf eyes in order to in order to solve this. I also feel like I need Monster Evil to move slightly out of the way so I can focus, but that's not their fault. Like we just need to get this one in, but when we get this one in here, this one comes out I'm just going to copy what they do. But first, I'm going to wave. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> so the hard part is we got to look through both of these rings at the same time, which basically means we got to look like something like this, but obviously maybe from the other side.
and then just just get this one. Oh, just get this one in here. <gasps> but then we got to get that one in here too. <laughs> It's like I got it. I got it all. I gotta get this. Maybe just come up over here. No, that's hitting all of the bad rings. That's again hitting every bad ring. Please just give me some arithmetic. You need me to calculate a fifteen percent tip on a seventy-one dollar bill? I got you. Okay. Whoa, this is it! No, because I gotta get the one that's lower. <laughs> I gotta get the lower ring. If I but to get the lower ring, we gotta take a lower perspective and then go here. But then we don't get that laddie. So then we gotta pivot. Pivot. Okay. Wata. Right here? Right here? You think this is it? This spot right here? I don't think so. This, this doesn't feel like... I, I don't think I can get it to work. Oh, from here, from the little divot. You genius. Now we're looking through none of them. All right. Basically, I think... I don't know what I'm doing, but you also don't know what you're doing, so goodbye. I'm going to follow the way marker on my, <laughs> on my map. <laughs> Sponsor would like you to use auto-detect on settings. You know what? That's a sensible idea. Let's go take a look at that. Options. Auto-detect. I assume that when it launched, it auto-detected. The problem is it put me on, on ultra-quality. And uh, I, was, I was suffering some dips as a result of that. There you go. This is on auto-detect settings. Hello is you to, uh, to you as well, gamers. We got the whole streamer squad here. I'm out of here. As far as I'm concerned, it's a race. <laughs> oh, no. I might need to click on this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't have four or five hidden pentad uh, mastery. Okay, okay. All right, we could do this. Okay, have we done... I want more logic puzzles. Do you? I do. I'm not instantaneous at the logic puzzles, but I can puzzle them out. Oh, sorry, that's not a puzzle. That's new to the ephemeral. <laughs> Bro, that's new to... No four in a row, the scenic route. Difficulty one, that's what I'm looking for. You cannot make four in a row. Let's puzzle it out. You must be... It's not possible! If I put a dark square there, it's going to make four. If, it's, if I put a light square there, it's going to make four. Oh, you can make four light-sided. Oh, oh, you guys are, you're free thinkers, bro. I'm going to start here. It has to be like that. And then in my opinion, what follows is it must be like this, which means it has to be like this, which means it must be like that, which means it must be like this which means it must be like that. Something's not right here. <laughs> you have a problem. I see. Start me again. We had, we had a good thing going here at the beginning. That's good. This is good. Now, don't fill anything in until you have to fill it in. This can be filled in. There you go. You're set. This, we cannot connect to you. This must be a white square, which means this must be a dark square. Which means... Get this out of here. No, that has to be a dark square. I was right about that one. 
light square, light square, which means you have to be a dark square. Okay. And then, no, no, I'd like to use this as like my seven channel. And then, because it, it obviously can't touch the five. So it's almost like a three, four, five, six, seven. Six, seven. Now, let me think about this for a second. I think we got something great going on. Bro in the chat said, verily. <laughs> That's how I know I'm cooking up something. I knew it! That's not difficulty one. I would like that hot fixed immediately, whatever the word is. Hot patched. That was difficulty four. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's an easy one. We start there. These can't touch. Ergo, it must be that, but it can't be this. Or this. Good. And now we get started. <laughs> How about I, I, all the programmers in chat are like, he's doing it. He's doing it. I got faith in him. He can do this. He can do this. He's taken a few algorithms classes in his days. Then like after 90 seconds, I'm like, what if we did? And they're like, nope, he's resisted. I know you got like 80% of the way there. And you were like one pearl of wisdom away. And then you said, I have a feeling, and you threw it all away. This five has to go somewhere. We don't want it to go this way, because it would be too crowded. So it should just go down instead. Which means you, you, won't be. Good. You should min maximize the amount of, minimize the amount of space in the center you're using. And then it's just science, bro. From that point onwards, it's just science. The easy part, as they say. Hang on. Oh, are you hearing the sounds? I should try to play a symphony when I fill them all in simultaneously. Mm, verily. The man is a genius. Well done, Seeker. I sense that you will thrive here. I was kind of getting that sense myself. Now I gift you the flame that burns within. Sorry, I'm noticing. What are you doing in the brazier? Don't you know that's where they light the fire? You have successfully completed the Aurora's first trial and unlocked your wings. There are two ways to enter flight. Triple jump to fly or press E in the air to start flying. All right. Hello, Adnap. May I join you in the brazier? Solve eight sky drops. Woohoo! Oh, I see it! <laughs> Where are we dropping, boys? Holy! Okay, hang on. Bro, I don't have any more, I don't have any more lift. Take me back. No. Level two, little embarrassing, Wata. I'll race you, I'll race you on this one. I'm in. 16. Don't, and you can't make a group of four? Holy cow. You're right, you're right. These don't need to be filled. My mistake, my mistake. I just finished it. It's not fair. You started like way before me. So you can't make a line of three, which means necessarily it can't be done. <laughs> can't be done. Oh, you can't make a line of four. Then just click like a madman. Oh. <laughs> Eight. 
areas must equal yeah we'll just wait bro you can't make that okay can't make that understandable have a nice day one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen reset me <laughs> move the six it can't be done bro what do you mean move the six the six is in a it's in a fixed position This is how I know you guys are programmers, okay? Because like as soon as one thing is suboptimal, the programmer impulse is to throw the whole project in the trash and rebuild it from zero. It's obviously less work to just refactor it, but you're like, oh, am I really going to go change this method, which means I got to go change this method, which means I got to go change this method, which means you're like, no, bro, you just alt F4, control shift N, new project, you just keep resetting? I know, that's because I'm saying it's a natural impulse. I'm, I'm embracing my animal nature. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying you, you can't blame me for doing it. <laughs> Which means you have to be like that. Okay, this looks very similar. Good point. To what we were cooking up before. No, no, wait. This is, this is right. This is right. This is right. And this is right. This looks very similar to what we were... Oh! Oh! Why didn't you say so? There we go! Don't clap for me. Don't, don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass yourself. You are making a mockery of oh hello donald never mind you're cool you're pretty cool you're cool i'm out of here i don't have to take this kind of abuse oh wait no no no! i do have to take this kind of abuse because i think i got to go back up to the top and fly through some hidden rings now this one this one is delightfully devilish i don't think anyone would dispute this never mind the man is a genius <laughs> holy and you said I was washed. Yeah, we'll wash this. Oh, you made it. You've earned another Mila Bellis. <laughs> the clapping man got me so good. Sponsor says we can drop a huge block of keys if you solve this one. Do you want to do you want to name a number? Here's the thing, I saw it too late. So I think I will put let's put 50 on the table. I don't even know if that would fill like if you would be able to put that into Twitch chat. Is that an insane ask? All right, Chris, what are you working on here? Oh, kind of embarrassing. I solved this one about 20 years ago. All right, 45 on the table right now for this puzzle right here. Are you ready? This will be how we conclude this segment of the stream. I know what you're going to say. If you had shown this to me two hours ago, I would have alt f forward. I would have said they've created atomic theory in the game. An intellectual miner such as myself could not possibly deign to solve it. Now I'm like, it's so doable. It must be this and this. I hope you guys are ready for your codes. And this, 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 and this. It's just that easy. They're clapping for me. Dropping 45 codes in chat is going to look so funny. <laughs> here's the thing okay everybody's gonna be like i'm not gonna take the first one in the chat message because like someone else is gonna go for the first one but somebody has to go for the first one okay otherwise the first one's gonna be unclaimed you can't all go for like the seventh one in the message okay logic grids with star difficulties are extreme challenges oh brother <laughs> 
Oh, we'll have to save this for a later day. Thanks for, for watching this segment so far, and I'll see you uh, I'll see you next time. Search the environment. Oh, so maybe I have to find like the numbers in the environment and then like bring a, bring a code back here. Yeah, there must be some kind of code. Chibli, Chibli's got it. Okay, Chibli, can you type the code for me? If this works, 100 gifted subs in Chibli's chat. But you've got to type it within the next 10 seconds so you're not just looking it up online. 0371832. I don't even think I can put in duplicate numbers, Chibli. 0371832. Imagine if it was like, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> oh man. And then I exit the puzzle and like the top of the pyramid like unfolds and a big like telescope comes out that shines like a beam of light to the other side of the map or something like it hits a statue's hand and reflects like into the sun or something like that. He said the second three is a four. All right, that's... Two chances, two chances, okay? Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be back in like three minutes. Hey, Anel, you should play Framed today. You know what? I'm not going to do the dulls today, but I will definitely do Framed. I can tell you there, there's two reasons I'm going to get this in one. One is because you said I should play it today, which means that uh, I'm going to know what it is. The other one is because I saw this within the last month. This is a movie that goes by the name of Patton. This is Patton when he was still in North Africa. George C. Scott, George C. Scott, George C. Scott. Hang on, let's see if we've got one that we've got a punchline for. Nope, nope, nope. Yes. Okay, that, uh, that's a classic. This is the one we're looking for. I don't care if you're neuron divergent. I need you to go to war. That's what we were waiting for. You can put that in the clip. Hey, Anel, I showed my wife the Hemomancer TikTok and it gave her the ick. Have you seen the TikTok account that is guy making a list? And it's the, listen, don't take this too seriously, okay? But it's, they take those interviews where uh, the interviewer finds women on the street and it says like, hey, what's one turnoff for you in a guy? And then like every answer is something like, I hate it when a guy, when you go to a guy's parents' house and then like he gets kissed on the cheek by his mom and then the list is on like number 700 now and like, it's like, don't get scared when you're, it seems like your plane is crashing. Don't like uh, listen to music on wired headphones. And he's, the scrolls like all the way. And then at the end is like, don't kiss your mom. Turn off. I could find a man really, really, really hot. The second he sends me an Instagram reel, you're done. Uh -huh. It's just funny, okay? It's not as serious. When he eats tomato pasta and the sides of his mouth go red. That one kind of gives me the ick, though. To be honest with you. Those women are serious, though? Yeah, but not all of them have all 700 things, dummy. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Some women would be like, come here, you got a little red on you. That would give her whatever the opposite of the ick is. Also, they're like 19 years old and fucking wasted at the bar when they get asked the question to begin with. <laughs> it's just like they don't know. They're out of their minds on any, any kind of cocktail of legal and illicit substances. You can't take it that seriously, man. It's just, it's just trolling. Banal, is that true, by the way? Did somebody come up to you in the store when they saw your NL hat and say, Konnichiwa? Because it doesn't make sense, obviously, but it's very funny. I guess because it has the kanji on it. They... <laughs> they assumed, I suppose. It happens to me all the time when I'm in the airport. People always assume I'm French-Canadian. 
then they try to read the hat. Something that happens to me when I'm wearing the, the older merch is that sometimes uh, the clerk will be like, do you know what your shirt says? And I'm like, yes. And then they're, it's always uncomfortable because they're like bagging the groceries and they're like, how do you know? Do you know Japanese? And I'm like, no, I just made the shirt. And they're like, you made the shirt? And I'm like, I made the shirt. Then they're like, are you a clothing designer? And I'm like, not really. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it's complicated. It's not really complicated, but it's too complicated to handle, you know, because I only got like eight things at Whole Foods. Visitor. Make all pets. Me when I see the xenomorph. Visitor. Xenomorph. Hmm? Extraterrestrial. Alien. I, I gotta do the other side of the impression. Instead of the guy who gets the word wrong, I gotta be guy who stares into the camera with unblinking eyes. What's this word? Alien. And this word? Xenomorph. How many did you get right? I gotta think about this. Who else we got here? A second mana hound? Maybe I don't mind. This is freaking me out. Does anyone else think that the mana hound sound is the sound that plays alongside the Junie Tony theme song in kids' YouTube? <laughs> Junie? Tony, you know what I'm talking, No, almost nobody's gonna know what I'm talking about, but maybe a couple of parents out there are like, that's where I know it from, Junie Tony. What's Junie Tony? It's like a, like a kind of animation studio that makes YouTube kids videos, but they, they make videos that have like good lessons, but the songs are cooked. Everyone is like, a, a situation, a situation. When there's a fire in your house, get low on the ground and crawl to an open space. Like there's no music musicianship at all. It's all just like what to do in an emergency. My kid just wants to watch Iron Man, Hulk and Thanos drive monster trucks through paint. I, I completely understand what you're talking about. 100%. My kid is not watching uh, Iron Man drive trucks through paint. But every once in a while, she'll click on um, you like one of those videos that's like... So there's those games that you always see the ads for, where it's like you maneuver an object across like three lanes, and it's like, am I gonna go into the lane that's like plus 100, or am I gonna go into the lane that's like minus 1,000? And they go like, they're in minus 1,000 like almost the whole time, and then at the very end, they go like to plus 100. But then, like, there's a, a logical extension of that. There are videos of three of those playing side by side. And I put a cork in that every single time as soon as I see it. Like, you're, if you're going to watch this with me, you're going to sit down and watch a story. Like, everyone makes fun of, like, subway surfers in the corner. You don't even realize that, like, kids' YouTube is actually as if it was just subway surfers in the corner, subway surfers in the middle, subway surfers on the side in, like, a six tile grid like at least the movie with the subway surfers has a movie going on at the same time but actually like my my kids favorite thing to watch on youtube is uh ai games of mario party like the computer just playing mario party against itself which i think is like it, it doesn't seem that bad to me because i'm like on the one hand she's watching like video games but it's kind of just like me watching sports or something it's like I don't have I don't have control of Patrick Mahomes you know it's not like I can change what he does he's gonna throw it to Travis Kelsey obviously but then what's crazy is I I thought I would be like a cool dad right because I'm like can I blow your mind we have this game like we could play Super Mario Party right now we could play Mario Tennis Aces right now she doesn't want to play it she wants to watch the computer play against itself more power to her, you know? I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna force her to be a gamer. I'm not gonna push her down that path. If she wants to, then sure, but, you know, she can, she can walk down that cursed road for herself. Imagine NL in a Hmong Cleasy. Our daughter is now, by the way, we're like making no progress, but that's okay. My daughter's at the age now where she's in like, I don't know, like six or seven activities a week, and Every single activity, I do see like a different kid wearing a Monkler jacket. 
It's not the same kid every time. It's usually like mom is dripped out head to toe in like Celine driving a Range Rover. Kid is like head to toe, like a, a Munkler jacket, which is probably not the way it's pronounced because I'm sure it's like Swiss or something. And then like under the jacket, it's like Burberry head to toe. And I'm like, bro, get your kid the fuck out of the community center. <laughs> Can't you do like some private shit, bro? Your ass really taking like group art class at the community center? Man, fuck you. I got the H&M sweater, Costco socks. I am wearing doer pants though. New Balance shoes. Roots hat <laughs> or a baseball cap from Winners. I'm wearing a thrash tank top and Rick Owens. Jack Dorsey! Jack Dorsey in the, in the chat! Jack Dorsey, I have to ask you an uncomfortable question. Do you remember in 2021 when you tweeted that um, hyperinflation is coming and it's going to affect us all in ways we can't possibly uh, fathom? Well, it's three years later, brother, and uh, they're back at somewhere between 2 and 3%. Would you like to, would you like to respond? How, librarian, how did you have that? How could you have possibly had that lined up? The speed with which you brought that is actually uh, troubling. Griffin from the Brussels Griffin from the French meaning Griffin. That's I'm just going to say that I'm impressed. So that's a little spooky dooky with it. Can I ask you, this is a serious question. I, and you'll know it's a serious question when I ask it. But... Are you using um, Google? Because I thought Google was like too washed to get results like that in the modern era. Half and half? What's the other half? Is the other half Bing or either that or I just search straight on Twitter? Oh, okay. You just got to parse out the right keywords. Can I tell you something? Kate, are you in the chat? I don't want to... I don't want to criticize you without you having an opportunity to defend yourself i feel like i am maybe i'm old or maybe i'm right those are the only two options okay i if you were to say hey find a restaurant in this neighborhood how would you find it would you go to google and type restaurants in neighborhood or would you go to like Google Maps and zoom in enough until like the businesses started showing up and type restaurants? Maps? My ass is old. Okay, I'm, I'm old and I'm wrong. I feel like I'm such a text-driven Andy. Like I'm, I'm still coming to terms with like apps. I would rather run everything from like the start menu or the run menu or like the command line or something like that. Like, when it, watching my kid use YouTube, and it's because she's, like, still illiterate. I get it. But it kind of, like, drives me crazy, because she's like, Daddy, I want to show you a video. And then she clicks on a video, and then scrolls through the related videos until she sees, like, what she wants to see, right? It's like relational browsing. Like, rather than having, it, having a, a search term that she's looking for, she just starts... She goes to like the website and then just clicks on things that are contextually related until she gets to where she wants to go. And I'm very much like a, I'm a keyword driven Andrew where I just type every piece of information about something that I'm looking for that I know so that Google takes it all and synthesizes it and spits out like the exact result that I'm looking for. But I think that if you're a keyword Andrew, I think our time is kind of past. I think the relational browsing is actually like the way of the future and it kind of scares me. Voice and image search are going to take over soon. I saw, I don't know, it, it was the new Samsung ad maybe or the new Google Pixel was like, it showed a dude and he would like saw a cool lamp that he liked and he was trying to type into search. He was like, cool red lamp with an accent on the top. And then it came up with a bunch of like fucked up results, which it, 
That's a Samsung ad. I was hoping it wasn't Google because I was like, hey, my brother in Christ, you know you made the search engine, right? So when it brings up a bunch of ads and like unrelated SEO stuffed chat GPT generated articles, you know that you were the one in the kitchen making the soup, right? So like, no wonder the search sucks. But anyway, sorry, I'm kind of, I got off on a tangent. But then it shows that like you use Google Lens and he like circles the image and then the, it searches for it and then he buys the lamp. Is this actually something that people want? I'm asking sincerely. I, I have become like Brad Pitt from the big short where I'm like, I feel like every step in technology is like, we invented something that's going to make your life easier. And I'm like, does it make life easier or does it make it easier to buy something? And they're like, it's yeah, you got us again. This makes it easier to buy something. That doesn't, I, I've never seen like a lamp and been like, I got to have that. I don't know if, if I'm in the minority or something, but I could imagine if that was out when drive came out and everyone wanted Ryan Gosling's jacket. Holy did you see the guy with the drive jacket at the parliament? I did not, uh, but you have correctly surmised that that is something that's relevant to my interests. <laughs> I mean, it's not like that big of a deal. It's just more like, I don't know. Doesn't anybody just Wikipedia what they're eating while they're eating it anymore? I'm in a position of weakness because all of my content is supported both by direct support and also advertisements. <laughs> but <laughs> well, this shit is pissing me off, bro. I do that. It's a great thing to do. I think it's a good, I know it sounds insane, but if you really think about it, it teaches you relevant stuff about your life or stuff that's interesting to you. You eat a sandwich every day. You've never been eating a sandwich and been like, I'm going to Wikipedia what's the history of sandwiches. And yet you've eaten a thousand of them in your life? You're, you have no interest whatsoever in scratching the surface of history that led to the sandwich being created? What are you going to look up instead? Fucking video 900 of Hatsune Miku singing some fucking song. It's not even her on stage. She's uh, mo-capping that stuff in a bunker somewhere in Akihabara. It's just an avatar. It's the same thing with the, the Apple Vision Pro. All I... I'm trying not to just be like a reactionary, but it's all like very close to dystopia for me. The people are like, check out how it's going to reinvent your life. You know all that invisible dirt you're vacuuming up? Well, we can make it so you'll see that you've missed spots in your Apple Vision Pro. Hey, you know when you're cooking pasta and you have to remember two separate timers in your head, you don't have to remember them anymore. Look, they're right in front of your eyes. As long as you strap these fucking goggles to your forehead the entire time you're cooking and the steam is blowing into your face. Now, it might be one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, these are the early implications or the early applications, but in the future... Yeah, yeah. In the future, your ass is going to be like, hang on, I can't cook. I got to charge my fucking Apple Vision Pro. And then when you put it on, it's going to have two timers that you downloaded from the App Store. And then every time you snooze a timer, it's going to pop up a 30 second advertisement that you can't get out because it's in your field of view. And then you're going to talk to your friends. You're going to be having some cyber beers and you're going to be saying, can you can you remember what the days were like before we had Apple Vision Pro, brother? They got... That you see the virtual calls where they got all the people's digital avatars on Apple Vision Pro? I don't even want to talk to you on FaceTime with like my real face and your real face. I don't even want to talk to you voice to voice. I want to send you like a 100 character text message that's like I'll be there in 15 minutes and then I'll show up in 15 minutes. But maybe I'm maybe I'm the the Luddite. But I'm not getting that shit unless Kate gets it. Then I'll try it out once and be like, that's cool. And then probably never use it again because I'm a little lazy. But like, I'm sure there will be something eventually in VR where I'm like, oh, that looks like a cool application of it. But it's still like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is a part of me that like every year that goes by, I'm like, if they had it in them, they would have done it by now. <laughs> this is how we get old people that can't use tech. Yeah, but the, when you're 13, it's easy to be like, you know, oh, you're out of touch, grandpa. When you start to become grandpa, you're like, 
Why did they make the fucking TVs worse? You used to just turn it on and then turn the channels. Now, sometimes I don't even know how to find shit on my own TV because the TV I bought has like a little panel on the home screen that has advertisements on it. And I'm like, I never got this shit. And then someone's like, dad, it's an, it's an advertisement. And I'm like, well, why is my product playing an advertisement to me? It's over-designed. Like, I don't mind coming up to speed with new technology if like the new technology is demonstrably adding some value to my life in exchange for having to learn it. But I'm not going to learn it just so like some punk kid who can't even dunk a basketball is like, you're out of touch. You know, you're not based just because you're 17 years old. You're just contemporary. To become based, you have to derive principles within yourself and then live according to those principles. So you got to give me like a good reason to get an Apple Vision Pro. And like, it will amp up my vacuuming is not a good reason. And I literally, like in my entire life, I don't think I've ever forgotten about like the pasta on the stove. Maybe I've burned a quesadilla from time to time, but that's fucked up because the first side of the quesadilla takes like 80% of the time to cook and the back side of the quesadilla takes 20%. So sometimes you do the calculation in your head and you're like, I'm going to give it the same amount of time on both sides. You fucked up because the pan got hot over the course of the first part. So then anyway, you sound like my dad complaining about me getting my first computer and you sound like some fucking hardline Solana user that's like, you sound like... Benjamin Franklin going out with a kite and being like, hey, Benjamin, why are you flying a kite in a lightning storm? Like, you have to prove that the invention actually has merit. You can't just be like, well, they said that about the toilet, too, and now there's one in every house. Like, you got it. You can't just argue from ad hominems, bro. So what is it? Is the pasta timer going to change my life? Or is there another app coming out that's actually going to win me over? People have been using VR goggles for years. I know they're using them. What, what, what does it have for me, though? I know it's like, oh, dude, I'm so sick of video games where you press the X button to swing a sword. Instead, I go like this. Ting. 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 And then I look, look, dude, you look down and there's a real potion bottle on your belt. And you grab it. You go like that. Like, that's cool. Once or twice. I'm not saying I'll never adopt VR. I'm simply saying it's got to be better than Vacuum Simulator Pro and you'll never burn your pasta sauce while you're waiting for your noodles to be done. They got to give me something. Because I was like, no disrespect. Kate and I used uh, the HTC Vive before literally like 99.9% .9 of the population. We, get, we did a tech demo with game developers in Vancouver who built Fantastic Contraption with like one of the HR Geiger ones where like there's like a seven inch diameter cable that plugged right into your brain stem that had to hang onto the ceiling. And while I was doing it, I this was like 2015 or something like that. I was like, this is going to change the world. As somebody who didn't understand engineering at all, inherently in my brain, I was like, this makes perfect sense. I can experiment with like taking apart an airplane engine or something like that and then putting it back together and it can give me feedback in real time and you know I can see what things would actually look like instead of having to translate like text to visuals in my head. Maybe there's like industrial applications for that that make sense. But they if they're going to hit the app that causes mass adoption for me it's not going to be FaceTime visible timers on the screen or I'm vacuuming up coins like some kind of fucking lab rat that's like, I just can't focus on vacuuming. Can you just put some kind of Skinner box in it so if I vacuum up enough coins, I can make it look like my vacuum is like a laser vacuum? Like, I already fucking figured that shit out, okay? Maybe for people that are younger that haven't had to build that kind of like tenacity, that will help and I'm not even against it. But I'm just saying I already solved that like in the firmware. <laughs> I can clean the bed. They, they already have that. They already have the chore enhancer. It's called Bluetooth earbuds in a podcast, okay? They just got to give me something a little bit more exciting. And it's not going to be shooting the bow and arrow. They'll, I'm sure they'll come up with something at some point. And then I'll be like, ah, oh, why didn't they? They need a second one. But they got to get the first one first. I think there's a global market for five computers, maybe. Ryan, you got me all wrong. You, you need to learn how to debate. Again, it's the same. What's, what's the counter argument for the dudes who are 
all in on Monero, you know, who say like, well, I've, I've got my net worth in bonk coin right now. Hey, that's pretty stupid. You know, they laughed at Thomas Edison too when he said he was going to invent a light bulb. That's true. They've also laughed at a bunch of stupid ideas. Like that does, it's a statement that inherently doesn't mean anything. You have to have it like you get, instead of being like, this is how people felt about old technology. How about telling me why it's going to change the world? I'm waiting for the non past it. I would love to get onto it. Nobody knows yet. Okay, well then, as far as I'm concerned, then I'm right for now. <laughs> Maybe it'll change. <laughs> but for now, I feel, I feel like it's right. I didn't say the tech is worthless. I said it's worthless for me. Maybe you suck ass at vacuuming and cooking pasta. And that's not to say, again, that that's all the technology is good for. But you got to tell me one of the things that it's actually good for. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking about the pasta timer and the vacuuming. Or the dude who is doing his laundry while watching Spider-Man in his field of view. Is the Peloton not just a gamified bicycle? It's, well, it's not really gamified, the way I use it, for one. And secondly, no one's like, there's going to be a Peloton in everyone's household. Whenever someone's like, I'll just use a real bike, I'm like, fucking go ahead, by all means. But I'm like, I'll just use my eyes. People are like, Pfft. you would have been the dude taking a steamship across the Atlantic Ocean after they invented the jet. I'm like, I don't know. I can kind of look at a jet and be like, holy shit, that takes a seven week trip and takes it to like seven hours instead. That's kind of crazy. I can see the utility, but apparently my ass is not a forward thinker because I can remember that the noodles take eight minutes to cook and the sauce is just done when you pour the noodles into it. I just gotta, you, if, if it was, if it had practical applications, which it might, you would be able to tell them to me instead of making personal attacks on my character. That's all I'm saying. You're actually, in my personal opinion, you're strengthening my argument by just insulting me instead of attacking my position. Plus, I am not always anti-technology. You're right. I thought Quibi had a chance. Now, I was wrong. It made sense to me, bro. Vertical videos. Everybody, everybody's watching content on their phones. Vertical videos. We need vertical TV. It's the way to go. I was in a Quibi. I had to track down the producer on LinkedIn and get him to pay me the $100 he owed me. That sounds like it tracks. Did you think Threads had a chance? Um, I don't know. It's still, it's a complicated situation. Because maybe, like, there was a time where I thought that, like... Twitter being asked means that it's the right opportunity for like another Twitter to show up. But I have increasingly come to this position that like Twitter is a, you cannot recreate Twitter. And it's not because it has any special sauce. It's just because it was born in a different world. And you, if you ask people to like buy into a new Twitter, you would be like, no, we know that it's fucking horrible for you now. This is like the difference between, like if you're already addicted to smoking cigarettes and someone was like, you're not addicted anymore. Do you want to try a cigarette? You would be like, absolutely not. It's going to kill me. But at the same time, if you were like, well, why don't you quit now? You're like, well, I've already come this far. <laughs> thoughts on Neuralink? I think you could probably derive my thoughts on Neuralink based on my thoughts on uh, augmented reality. Neuralink scares me more than it inspires me. Here's so I'm not trying to be a doomer. I'm very non-doomer, okay? But I'll just tell you my line of reasoning for this. You can remember, let's say you're 30 years old. Do you remember what life was like 10 years ago? Technology has changed a lot. It's improved a lot in the sense that like the processors got faster um, and you have more access to information. Do you think that that has caused your overall degree of life to improve? Are you happier now? Obviously, there's other things at play. You know, if you were 20, then you probably had less responsibility. If you're 30 now, you probably have more. For me, I feel like what actually determines the quality of my life is my habits, my relationships with the people around me, how I treat other people and how other people treat me. And that is like 90%, like a set thermostat of happiness that's at like 60. And then the the way that I affect the world immediately around me and the way that it impacts me can change it like plus 20 or minus 20. I'm never hitting 100, but I'm never hitting zero. 
So I just feel like anytime people are like, this new piece of technology is going to change everything. I'm like, it might, but I really feel without becoming a caricature, I feel like it changes a lot and then you get used to it and the people who reap the benefits are at the top. Like Instagram, Uber, the rise of social media, all of, all of these things over the last like 10 years that have, have really taken off. They have added like a little bit of like quality of life, but mostly just siphoned off other people's money and pushed it to the people who like invented it or invested it in the first place. Like I really think about like, like DoorDash, like the people who invented DoorDash think that they have done a societal good, which is crazy to me because for like a couple of years, I kind of like believed it. I was like, they're good. We used to just be able to get pizza and Chinese food delivered. We used to only be able to get pizza and Chinese food. That's crazy. Now we can get sushi delivered. Now we can get falafel delivered. Holy. Then for like a couple of years, I was like, this is amazing. And then we're like five years later. And I'm like, I wish we could. Like nowadays when my wife asked me what we should get for takeout or delivery, I'm like, please say pizza or Chinese. <laughs> so that our, our $25 meal comes to like $31 with a $6 cash tip instead of $72. I don't know. It's, I don't, I'm genuinely not like cynical in the sense that I'm like, this makes the, this is killing the world. I'm more cynical in the sense that I'm like, I just feel like it, you get like a brief dopamine hit where you're like, wow, what an amazing invention. Then your level of contentness in life like acclimates to it in six months. And the only lasting impact is that you feel like you can't go back. This is why you end up with like people on social media are like, why aren't kids happy these days? You know, I would have killed for a smartphone in 1984. And you're like, well, yeah, obviously you would have killed for a smartphone in 1984, but they like they're... Had, they're depressed for like the same reasons that people have been depressed forever. They like have no hope for the future of the world. The economics of it are fucked up, like et cetera, et cetera. The, I've, I guess over time, I've come to believe that the things that would actually make life better for people are not like momentary dopamine hits of like new technology, like, oh, that we made like Netflix too, or like, you know, you can, Amazon can deliver stuff to you in the, in the sky and instead like fixing the housing crisis by constructing like a shitload more houses and stuff like that. And like more regulations that would force corporations to give their employees benefits or maybe even like a pension or something like that. So they don't feel like they have to leave their job once every year in order to get a salary buff because there's no corporate loyalty anymore and stuff like that. But instead, it's like, what are you complaining about, bro? There's TikTok now. And I'm like, well, I don't necessarily think TikTok's part of the problem. But I don't, I, I guess I don't think it's part of the solution. <clears throat> Maybe it'll have more than just uh, pasta timers and HD vacuuming. But like, part of me is like, is this just DoorDash 3? Is this email again? Is this email 2? Me inventing email, this is crazy. I can talk to anybody at any point. Me using email in 2024, oh fuck. <laughs> anybody can contact me at any moment. I did read an article and it was complaining about uh, Gen Z employees entering the white collar workforce. And this is how I know I'm not out of touch. Maybe I'm out of touch with the AR, but I'm still in touch by being cool with the youth of the nation. It was like, it's very frustrating to deal with Gen Z because many of them choose not to log into their work emails when they're off the clock. And I'm like, that's fucking smart, bro. I'm not even stealing valor from millennials who have done that. Cause I understand that you're like, I can get ahead a little bit if I sign into my email when I'm at home. The problem is as soon as you cast on the yoke, you can't cast it off, right? Like that's, that's sick that when they leave their office, they're like, I'm just not gonna, look at anything related to work unless you you know pay me to look at it that's smart which is why i get pissed off because like today's friday right i know oh that's not smart 
any day of the week or any any day now my accountant is going to email me and be like hey i need some more documents but like friday at 5 p.m rolls around and i'm like i'm free i don't have to worry about that email coming in but sometimes they email me like friday at 8 p.m and i'm like f i wouldn't say the real f word to my account i'm like f you <laughs> I thought we had a deal, bro. I thought that the work week was over and that means I didn't have anything to be apprehensive about. And you broke that deal by overworking yourself. And then I broke it by checking my email. Come on. What if your accountant's watching? I am basically taking their side. I'm saying it would probably be good if they could work less. Unfortunately, I think accountants are like one of those jobs where you can't work less. <laughs> Because you'd be like, oh, well, sorry, we didn't get your taxes done by Friday at 5 p.m. I know the deadline's Monday at 8, but, you know, that's true. Job's gone. Brad, what are you going to do? We play in Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm going to give you, you know how much I'd love to say no. So take this seriously. I'm going to give you a maybe on Dragon's Dogma 2. Elden Ring has been is become abandonware from from software. They have forgotten that it existed. They're too busy making uh, Dark Souls Mario Party, aka Armored Core. Dragon's Dogma might fulfill the niche. I know it's not a Souls like game, but of like a fantasy combat RPG. I have played a little Dragon's Dogma one. Capcom sent me a press copy of like the director's cut edition in like 2013. Depending on where it comes out in the release window, its length and its reception, then yes, there is a chance that I would play Dragon's Dogma 2. You got to upgrade your PC for it? No, nah, bro, I'll play on PS5. It's capped at 30 FPS on PS5. Well, it's probably capped at like 6 FPS on my... Uh, on my PC, so. <laughs> also, you, I have so many people on my side, I don't feel comfortable unless I'm hated, okay? My thoughts on the dopamine hit of like a new app that changes your life, just becoming the normal world and you lose all the dopamine associated with it, is the same way I feel about video game frame rates and graphics. When I played games on the Sony PlayStation 1, every game was 12.27 frames per second, and we liked it. We went up to 30 FPS, I said, holy cow, this looks so smooth. Went up to 60 FPS, said, wow, this looks even smoother. The lasting legacy is that everything looks, at a, I, my perception of it is that it's exactly the same as it was when I was playing games uh, as a 12 year old, but I can't go back to 30 and I definitely can't go back to 12 now. So all it's done is, is saddle me with expectations. So it, I'm, I'm clinging to the 30 FPS still being, I wouldn't say my normal, but like being acceptable, I am clinging to it. Because I know as soon as I'm like, this is unacceptable, everything, 60 is the bare minimum and 90 is the, the minimum acceptable level, then it's like, I can't go back. It's like, I'm, I'm not a, a, an ophthalmologist. I'm, I'm just a philosopher, okay? There's an interesting idea to think about, right? Obviously 60 is better than 30. Anybody arguing 30 is better than 60, at least from like an animation standpoint. Sometimes on TV and movies, like I, I feel like 60 is like a little too fake sometimes, but that's like notwithstanding. With video games, it's going to look better in 60 than it does in 30. But like, does your brain know when you're playing something that's 60, is your brain like, oh yeah, this is so much better than 30? before you knew that 60 existed. You know what I'm saying? Because me as a 14 year old, I was playing games like sports games where the player models looked like they had a, a, a stocking over their head and their faces were like flat and blown out. And at 14 years old, I was like, that's Peter Bondra of the Washington Capitals. That's fucking his spitting image. That is photo realistic. This actually looks like it could be like me in the stadium right now. And then when you go back and look at it, it looks like it's Peter Bondra's face if someone like smashed it with a sledgehammer <laughs> until it became plasticine. And when I play games now that are new, my brain is not like, 
oh, this looks so much better than like Rise Son of Rome did on the Xbox One when it came out. I'm like, oh, it's the same. Like, I feel like this is the height of graphics. It activates the same neurological response within myself. But then at the end of the day, the only thing that actually lasts is that the last console games now look like total dog shit. And I've re-acclimated my set point to Rise Son of Rome 2 on the Xbox 17. The government should make it illegal to make computers better for like 10 years. Let's not waste all this time innovating on graphics and, you know, physics engines and stuff like that. Let's spend some time iterating in another direction. How about, how about optimizing for like interest instead of like Spider-Man looks 2% more realistic in this game? Make games like not 80 gigabytes? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, yeah. The government should uh, make it illegal or at least you have to pay like extra tariffs or something if your game is more than 20 gigabytes. At 20 gigabytes, you pay no penalties. Every 10 gigabytes over that you go, pardon me, you, play, you pay a cumulative fine that goes straight into the most based government fund. I don't know what it would be. Something related to the food bank maybe? <laughs> Stop, this is an awful take. I get it, you're a mod on r slash battle stations. Listen, we can both make personal attacks. He will not divide us, okay? You're the he? I know, so stop letting me divide you. You should just agree with me. <laughs> oh. I felt like I was kind of spitting in Islands of Insight when I was like, chat will always, if you ever tell chat you bought anything, They'll be like, why would you buy that? Why didn't you just do X instead? The only exception is even if your computer is only like a year old, they'll be like, oh, you should definitely get like some new hardware in there. You got a 2080 Ti? Bro, that thing's like four years old now. You've at least got to get a 3090 Ti. And if you're ever like, I bought a new vacuum cleaner, people are like, what's wrong with your old one? <laughs> I'm still wearing the same shoes that I bought when I entered 12th grade, and you've bought a second vacuum cleaner? Yeah, how much you got in your PC, little bro? That's different, that's different, okay? I work from home. That's different. We're in the 40 series now? God does not determine what series we're in, okay? That's Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA. And you can choose to live by the rules that he sets out if you want, but I'm marching to the beat of my own drum. It's not, like, it's not like they mined, like, a new... They didn't invent, like, a new field of science. They just got to the end of the nines, right? And then they were like, we got to go up to the threes now. There's been a ton of advancement in computing in the last four years. How does this benefit me? Okay, not running the sponsored stream game at 17 FPS. That's definitely true. But what? What am I gonna do with this increased computing power? We're playing Super Auto Pets here. I, I, the other thing that I play 90% of the time on stream is uh, Jackbox Games, which uses like seven centibytes of RAM, and then browser-based games, Google Chrome maybe for sure, but we really like, bro, 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 but when Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC, how are you gonna play Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC with the photorealistic mod? I'm not gonna play that shit. Because they're always like, John Marston, thanks for coming. Your actual mission is an eight-minute horse ride away. Then when you get there, they're like, fucking ride your horse eight minutes that way and capture this guy and then ride your ass eight minutes back to me to get your loot. And then they give me the loot and I, to get my next quest, I got to ride my ass eight minutes back to town. But the sand, oh, look at the telemetry effects on the sand. <laughs> what a... I did, I'm, I'm holding, I eventually will buy a new computer, okay? I'm holding steady on this one, though. I don't want to, again, it's the AR, okay? I'll buy a new computer with a better video card, but I'm hoping that they can make a better reason than, hey, the new 7 out of 10 AAA game that you didn't want to play is going to look awesome, okay? It's probably going to be because, like, the fucking solder on this is melting or rusting or something. I don't really know what goes on inside of the box. I just press the button to turn it on. Yesterday you said the combat's boring, today you say the riding is boring, which is it? 
Well, in Red Dead Redemption's case, it's all boring. Except the cutscenes. But all the, the gameplay parts, not only are the, it's, it's the opposite of the classic restaurant analogy, right? The food here is, is not good and the portion sizes are too big. You can like it, everybody likes it, that's fine. It's just, I don't have to like it. Why are you offended that I don't like it? You didn't make Red Dead Redemption, little bro. You're not like Bill Marston. I'm just saying I would like it more if they made Red Dead Redemption into a game where you played as like uh, the commander of a squad of mechs and it, play, it took place on like a grid and you could see predictable outcomes for absolutely everything that happened and based on your results within that grid you got more or less resources that you could use to upgrade your mods in cool or your mechs in cool ways that interacted with one another hey ham1337 thanks for the gifted subscriptions thank you isn't that into the breach yeah but when we got into the breach everybody said mm, it's okay but i want ftl2 Meanwhile, then you get Red Dead Redemption 2, and everyone's like, ding, ding, it's okay, but I wish they made Grand Theft Auto 6 instead. Grand Theft Auto 6 might be the exception, though. When it comes out, people are probably going to be like, I'm glad they made this, <laughs> if I had to guess. But that's because they're doing the right thing. They're making one of those every 17 years. Also, editor's note, I've never played um, Red Dead Redemption 2. But I did play Red Dead Redemption Run uh, 1, mostly the multiplayer. <laughs> we can tell. I, I, I was very excited for Red Dead Redemption 1. I do remember, and again, people are going to be like, you're sick. I need to remind you these are ones and zeros, bits and bytes, right? The, one of the things that I thought was cool about Red Dead Redemption 1 is I remember like I was on my way to a quest marker or something, and there was... Um, like a dude tied up with his hands behind his back. And he was like, you got to get the, the bandit that tied me up. He's staying in Glib's cave. And I was like, I hear you. I was like, oh, my God, a living world with, uh, with quests everywhere. It's not just like one dude hanging out outside of a saloon until you press X on him. Like there's dynamic quests. So I, I rode over to the bandit's cave and went, pew, and I blew the bandit away. Then I rode back to the dude, and he said, thank you for uh, killing bandit Dave for me. I really appreciate it. Now on timey. And then I took out my piece, and I blew him away, too. And I said, fuck you, man. <laughs> I'm the master of my own domain. And I was like, that's smart game design. But then after that, there was, uh, I remember there was an extended segment where you had to protect, protect some dude's like snake oil wagon from robbers and you committed like 92 murders over the course of that and then the dude isn't even like a nice guy and then they don't let you shoot him because he's part of the narrative. And I was like, cowards. <laughs> Say what you will about Bethesda. But they got absolutely no problem being like, yeah, you could shoot the dude that just gave you the quest in the head if you want. It might ruin your game forever, but you could do it. They don't do that anymore? What? Since when? No! Bethesda's gone woke or something. This is why I think it'd be funny to watch you play Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, I mean, it sounds funny, but then, you know, the second I started, like, marking an NPC, people would be like, no, he gives you, he gives you Dil, Dilgo sword quest later. That monster you slayed actually could have been pacified non-violently through a speech check if you simply listened to all of his dialogue. No disrespect to Baldur's Gate 3. That's a game that's fire. It's just too long for me, okay? Lots of disrespect to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. A game that exists only for profit-driven enterprises, in my personal opinion. Now, I know a lot of them, that's like a big part of it. But you can, kind of, you can have good stuff, too, that also makes a lot of money. But I'm not actually cynical about gaming. I would say I'm neutral about gaming. I'm simply cynical about AAA gaming. I think indie games, you know, there's been a lot of interesting indie stuff that's come out. I, the thing is, you guys, not all of you, but many of you are hypocrites. So whenever I play a 7 out of 10 AAA game, 
and I'm like, I'm not enjoying it that much, they're like, oh, he doesn't like any games. Whenever I play a 7 out of 10 indie game, the chat is all like, this shit looks boring as fuck. Play something else. <laughs> they got no respect, man. You know it's true. She got the damn thing on her. Do it. Up your hair. Can you imagine if you turn it on and I would like ah 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 ah? <laughs> 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 imagine if like I went <laughs> and I had like a big cone on the top of my head from where the vacuum had sucked on my skull. <laughs> How's she vacuuming without AR? I know, bro. I mean, it's like. What what are you doing here? So true. I mean, it's like it's they just invented the light bulb and she's up there using a candle, bro. It doesn't make sense. All right, I've insulted you guys enough. Why don't you insult me a little bit? I'm going to ask a question. How many bagels a day is too many bagels? Counter addendum to the information. It's the only bread product I'm eating right now. I do have another serving of grains at dinner time, usually some kind of rice with, with some beans in it. Three, three is too many. That's exactly how many I have. I have one at uh, 5 a.m. with some cream cheese when I wake up. And then I have one at 8.45 before stream when I finish my bike ride. And then I'll have one with like some meat and some vegetables on it for lunch. The thing is, I also found myself saying three is too many. So I bought bread. And then I was just having a bagel early before my bike ride. And then like a sandwich before my stream, which is basically just a bagel, but like square. And then having a sandwich or a bagel for lunch. And I was like... Well, like, is this really, like, I, I'm now not eating so many bagels, but at the same time, I kind of feel like I'm, it's the same effect at the end of the day. What's up with the carbo loading? I'm pretty sure, like, my base metabolic rate plus the amount that I cycle means that I need to eat, like, maybe, like, 35 to 3,600 calories a day. And especially in the morning, like, much of that needs to be relatively simple carbohydrates. How many calories are in the bagel? That's, again, not to just be funny, but like, I'm kind of pissed off. I'm pretty sure the bagels are like 220 calories each. I haven't been back to Costco. The Costco cheddar jalapeno bagels are 330 calories each. My ass was zooming at 6.35 in the morning when that shit hit the bloodstream. I was off to the races. These like Western family bagels from Daryl's Deals, they're like 220 calories each. You gotta check out poor things. I know, I would love to. We're actually, I'm getting optimistic that I'll be able to resume, um, I don't wanna call it normal life, cause whatever you're living is like normal if you're living it long enough, right? But like, I haven't been able to interface much in with, with art and culture in my community since the birth of my daughter, but now she's getting more independent. She's doing lots of activities and stuff. I still, like, to go see a movie at the movie theater takes, like, let's be realistic. It takes three hours. You need to, like, either drop your kid off or get a babysitter. It might take you 30 minutes to get there. The movie's going to be realistically two hours long. It's going to take you 30 minutes to get back. So, so it might even take, like, four. I don't have a four-hour window yet. I would say my maximum window right now is, like, two hours and 50 minutes. But my maximum window this time last year was like eight minutes. So <laughs> we've really come a long way. So I'm optimistic that maybe by the end of 2024 or 2025, I will be able to be that guy who's like, oh, you haven't seen that yet? It came out three weeks ago. God, I would love that. Past Lives was a great film. Who owns the rights to Past Lives? That's, that, that would be, it would instantly go to the top of my Peloton watch list if Peloton allowed me to watch it. A24. Okay, does A24 have a history of selling their rights? 
for distribution. It'll be on Showtime. It's on Amazon Prime Canada. Okay, not, not Peloton Core, unfortunately. One of these days, maybe. No Prime video on Peloton? Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's a little silly. There are four video platforms right now that you can watch on the Peloton. Bike is right next to the stream computer, right? Why not just point the bike at the computer? Me waking up my whole family at 6.07 a.m. Watching Torah, Torah, Torah through my monitor speakers at 117 decibels. <laughs> what about Bluetooth earbuds? Listen, there's a lot of th there's one thing you need to learn about me, and I'm surprised we go through this all the time. So you really should know it by now. And I should know better than to engage in it as well is the other thing. If I'm in my flow state, and I think this goes for anybody. If you're in your flow state and people are like, why don't you do it this way instead? All you want them to do is be quiet. I always, and this is just one example. It doesn't necessarily prove that this is always how it is, but it's an example I always come back to. Summer of 2014, I got really into running. Started doing couch to 5K, finished couch to 5K, I don't know, like four weeks, something like that. Did bridge to 10K, finished bridge to 10K. All of it was inside on the treadmill, okay? So at that, that point, that was like maybe three months after I started running. I was running 10K like four or five days a week. Starting to put in some longer runs, starting to realize that most of running is not running the same length every single day. If you want to become a more serious runner, you like pull some days down and then you do like one long day and then one fast day that's a shorter distance. So I was doing that all inside at the community center gym. And then I talked to uh, a friend of mine. They said, don't you live in Vancouver? They have like the most beautiful outdoor running trails. You're wasting your time. I was perfectly happy and it's not their fault because they are right. And I was perfectly happy, running outside, perfectly contented. I said I could do this for the rest of my life. I said, you know what? They're right. Started running along like the seawall in the beach in Vancouver. First time, I was like, this is beautiful. They're absolutely right. Second time, uh, stepped on a pebble that was on the path. Foot went like this toward the meniscus in my knee. And basically, you have run like six times since then. I think a good lesson sometimes is that if so, if what you've got is working for you i wouldn't say be resistant to change but like there's a reason they say if it ain't broke don't fix it the bike i mean we put in 25000 minutes last year 27000 minutes i'm not going to be tweaking the position just so what i can watch past lives on my 19 inch dell monitor like, I'll just watch fucking the insider on the bike instead. It's okay. Like the, every time there's a change, there's a chance that things never come back. You know, like when you're on a diet and you're like, I could do this forever. And then you like go on vacation and on vacation, the first day you're like, I'm going to have a salad. And then the second day you're like, I'm going to do a cheat day. And then the third day you're like, I'm going to get my diet back on track when I get back from vacation. And then like two years later, you're like, oh, I'm fat again. So I like when you're in the routine... I'm very hesitant to an outsider going like, hey, here's what you should do. Trust me, I'm moisturized, unbothered, in my lane, watching George C. Scott's 1970 film Patton. I'm having a good time. You don't have to worry about me. Keep in mind, it's a bike that goes nowhere. The pursuit of better is always going to leave me in the same place. You would never escape the Matrix? I think that's probably true. I don't have the right kind of temperament to escape from the Matrix. Like, I think as soon as some lady came to my house and was like, follow the white rabbit, I might follow her like to the end of the hallway. But as soon as they went to like a nightclub at 1147 p.m., I'd be like, sister, I got to go to sleep. This is just, can't you just tell me? <laughs> can't you just tell me what you want to tell me? Why do I have to go in through like the back rooms to get here? You know, it seems like a whole lot of rigmarole for something that you could just type up in a text message. <laughs> Plus, did you ever consider... If I uh, escaped the Matrix, I would never have gotten to see the movie The Matrix. You might say, well, you could have lived the movie The Matrix. Yeah, but that doesn't seem nearly as fun. That seems kind of uh, very difficult. Pretty low quality of life. They're eating that stuff that's got everything the body needs, but it doesn't have everything the body needs. You know what I'm talking about? 
I mean, all I know about The Matrix, well, that's not true. I know a lot about the movie, at least. But it must have sucked ass to live on the Nebuchadnezzar because Cypher literally sold out the only six real people he actually knew for one steak and a glass of red wine. Like, it must have fucking blown chunks to live on that ship, brother. There was nothing going on. <laughs> Dude said, I would never betray Morpheus and Trinity. Agent Smith said, bet. How about a ribeye and a, and a Merlot? He was like, you got me. You son of a bitch, you drive a hard bargain. How big is your house to vacuum that long? You, there's a lesson that most people learn too late, admittedly. You don't have to say every thought that pops into your head. You recognize that you're verbally abusing me at work right now, right? Like, I'm at my damn job. I'm not just like a guy. This is my fucking office. You're, you came into my office and said, fuck you. <laughs> you realize how fucked up that is? You stepped into my office with the audacity to not even be a subscriber and basically said, hey, I don't like you. That's crazy energy, bro. Plus, it doesn't matter how long she vacuums. She's probably missing a couple of coins from the Apple Vision Pro, okay? If you don't get all the coins, then you don't get a gold star on the day. If you don't get a week of gold stars, then you don't get the update that skins your vacuum cleaner so it looks like a lightsaber, okay? Which is the whole reason you're vacuuming in the first place. A battle pass would motivate me to do chores more. Like, unironically, in spite of everything that I've said, I do sort of feel like everything that sucks would benefit from having a battle pass. I think we should consider ourselves lucky that like not every company on earth has put a battle pass into absolutely everything. Because it's it manipulates the human brain so easily. If there's something like in a game I don't want to do, I'm like, fuck that, I'm not going to do it. But if they're like, if you do it, it'll give you 60 loyalty points. And when you get 150 loyalty points, you get like a new axe. I'm like, well, I might as well just knock it out. It'll only take a second. Yeah, imagine if you had like a Gmail battle pass and if you replied to like five emails within five minutes of seeing them, you received like, I don't even know what they would give you, like a the fireworks when you, when you sent, every time you sent an email to someone, it would give you like a hit marker or something like that when they opened it. You'd be sitting at your desk like eight hours later, like, Tff. yes. <laughs> Red Dot! Peloton Battle Pass? I'm actually... People have me mistaken, by the way. They think that I love the Peloton Corporation. I don't. I love the engineering department at Peloton. They did an amazing job constructing this. It's made out of real metal. This is not corrugated cardboard and plastic, okay? The software team, I'm sure they're doing their best, but it hasn't manifested itself in quality on the screen yet. And the, the coaches, you know, they're, they're doing good stuff, but I'm just kind of, I've, I've, I've heard it all before. But I'm at the point where actually, like, I used to use the Peloton app on my phone to, like, program what I was going to do daily on the Peloton. But then when I stopped taking classes and started just watching movies instead, I didn't have to do that. So I would log in, or not log in, but open it up, like, once a month or something like that, just to see, like, track my metrics and stuff like that. But I didn't really use it too much. I just used the, the bike itself. And then um, I went to open the app today to see how I'm doing in the annual so far in terms of number of minutes in 2024. And it said, you've been logged out. Uh, and I said, well, might be the last time I use that app. I assume I've, we've, we've progressed beyond the point to need it. I'm a big believer in you should never log me out of anything. So online banking, maybe. <laughs> that one makes sense. It's a bummer. Why? I'm still using the bike and the, the service. I'm just like, I don't need to use the app anymore. Why'd you stop with the classes? At some point, like you just, you've heard it all. Like every class is basically, you know, we're gonna start with like a one song warm up, and then you're gonna be out of the saddle, down in the saddle going fast, down in the saddle climbing. You can do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. I've taken literally over a thousand of those. It was time to get back into some Kino cinema. Eventually, you get the Christopher Nolan rant, though. Well, that would require me to take a Jen Sherman class, which is not likely. Enjoy the rest of your, your evening and your weekend. I should be back on Monday. 
Goodbye to the gamers. Enjoy your Apple Vision Pro. Come back on Monday and tell me what the killer app is. There's got to be something, man. I believe it. I believe that there's something, okay? You know what it would be good for? Looking at my phone, which has a Google tab open to look for something, and then also having... I could drag my Google tab over to store it and then use my phone to look for something else. Instead of like, oh, my search for information has given me another question that I want to look for, and then I type in my question, and then I'm like, oh, I lost my original question. That's the one thing it can't do. If technology has one hater, it is me. Bro invented opening a new tab. Okay, but when you invent putting rings on the floor to vacuum up like some kind of Sonic the Hedgehog like housekeeper, that's like genius. Give him the Nobel Prize and give a shit anomics. Anyway, have a good weekend. I got yelled on my friend's grandma for not taking my shoes off before coming in and I still carry the trauma. <laughs> Dude, have you, have you seen people? They asked um shoe on shoe off debate and then people it was like it was like a fire debate it was crazy some people get like offended for taking shoes off like it's like oh my gosh like you want me to take my shoes off to go to your house and they flip and i was like what the hell <laughs> It's not something that you should be so worked up about. You know what I mean? If they say, oh, keep your shoes, then you keep your shoes. If they tell you to take your shoes off, then you take your shoes off. That's why you wear socks. But some people, like, freak out when they go like, oh, you have to take your shoes off? Like, they get so offended. Like, I am... The guest, you cannot tell me what to do. Taking my shoes off makes me very uncomfortable. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what kind of feet do you have? Why are you so crazy? <laughs> oh. But I mean, the, the thing about it is that even if you have a stinky feet, like, we don't crawl so unlike unless you have crazy stinky feet most likely i would not be able to smell your stinky feet just because we don't like crawl on the floor but i mean you should not have a stinky feet honestly i remember um it was really funny i think it was my when i was in university i think it was my first year First year, no, second year in my university year, I had a university university friends over for my birthday at my parents' house. And then, <laughs> to be fair, everyone that I invited were Asian. There were like three people that I invited and all three, oh no, out of three people, two were Asian and one was white. But one of the Asian friend he had us really stinky feet. And then we were like, dude, what is the smell? We were like, what is the smell? And I was like, yo, bro, it's your feet, dude. <laughs> and then we all like ganged up and was like, take your socks off. Take your socks off. It smells so bad. <laughs> and then we were like, when did you wear, when did you wash your socks? And he's like, I don't remember. Oh, man, so good. You traumatized him for life? Bro should have washed his socks, man. He did not wash his socks. He said he doesn't remember the last time he washed his socks, okay? It wasn't just like kind of sticky. It was like foul. It was foul. So like, so like three of us were like, what is this smell? I think there is like a, and then one of my friends, she said there, there must be like a dead rat or something. Like, <laughs> she was like, you must have like a dead animal in here.
And I'm like, no, nah, dude, I don't have any dead animal. And then we were trying to find the source of the smell and it was like the dude's socks. <laughs> we were like, bro, your socks. What if you had stinky feet and blamed it on your friend? No, nah, dude. We went like, we went like dog detective. Like we were sniffing. <laughs> we we're sniffing, man. We were like, what does that smell, man? It was because my friend said there was a dead animal. That's what the dead animal smells like. So I was freaking out. I was like, yo, I don't want to live in a house with a dead rat or something. So I was like, we got to find the source of the smell. <laughs> Oh my god, dude, you've got a dead animal in your socks. That's so funny. But I mean, like, we kind of all knew it was him. Because, like, he do be looking like he only take a shower once a week. And then you'll be asking, oh my gosh, why would you invite him over to your birthday? It's because, like, we were nerds. We were, the, we were the nerdy nerds wanted to play Nintendo 64, Mario, 60, Mario Kart 64. Still roasting his ass even now. I'm sure he's a changed man. It's been a decade. You know, I understand. So if I see him again, I will not bring that up again. Are you crazy? You think I'm some kind of psychotic person? I'll be like, oh, hey, by the way, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember when you wore your stinky socks? Do you remember how much your feet stank on my birthday? No. And his name was Ryan. Probably moved across country, changed his name, left his old identity behind. Oh my god. Jesus. Jesus. Heart and soul. It's got a lot of heart and soul. I don't know the rest of the words, but it's got a pretty good baseline, pretty good baseline, heart and soul. My wife is streaming Mahjong Monday's Pog. I'll send you right over to her stream. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday night. I'll see you tomorrow for Dome Keeper. Boop, I scram